Uh, we're very giggly today. Welcome to House Seats Presents. <laughs> I forget that it's actually Monday. It seems like not Monday. I don't know what day that it seems like, but it definitely doesn't feel like Monday. I don't know how it is for you in the performer world, Andrew, but today does not feel like Monday. It feels like Monday to me. It feel, there you go. <laughs> well, from here. We have Andrew Ragone here today from uh, Steve Wynn's Showstoppers. <laughs> And you know, Andrew, you had this is your first time at the show. First this time, is, I think yeah. this is show number thirty, almost Scott. Thirty-two. What? Oh my gosh, we've hit the thirty mark already. Wow. So see, see, Andrew was asking earlier how long we've been doing this. We've been doing this for thirty-two shows. Wow. We have a nice little audience out there, Jason, yeah. Keely. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so at the top of the show, we always talk about what we did over the weekend, and the weekend really much, pretty much included our time at the win. Uh, yeah. Jason and I went and saw the show on. Friday, because I don't remember the days of the week. Uh, and yeah, that was us at Parasol Down afterwards. Isn't it amazing? I forget how beautiful. See, the wind always makes me feel like I'm on vacation when I'm there. Because I know. Because he purposely blocked the strip. I remember reading this back when they built it, you know, because Bellagio is very much the spectacle for everyone to see mm -hmm. when he brought everything inward. So you have to actually be on property to see everything around you. Right, right, right. And I Yeah. That's where I take all my friends oh, when they come into town. I too, love it. It's such a cool place. You know? When it started, so it was a really odd night. So it started raining over us, but oh. we were in the sort of the seats that are kind of underneath the awning. Uh huh. Wow, we have a little snow. <laughs> you know, I did get hailed on yesterday, very randomly. Um, so yeah, so every cleared out really fast, but we just sat there the whole night. We had the showstopper beverage. Oh, do you know it? they have a showstopper? I beverage? didn't know that. You what didn't is know it? That? Oh, what is good. it? It's wild turkey. I know that. Uh -huh. Number one. There and then a bunch of other ingredients. It's a very sweet, delicious cocktail, though. and I think it has like a a candied uh, orange peel on there. Oh. Very fancy cocktail. So we had a couple of those after the show, <laughs> and then lost some money at the you know machines there. So we ah. gave you some money, Mister Wynn. Yes, he's happy. He is. I know. Oh wow! I, these are sound effects I've never heard on our show thus far, <laughs> and I know we live in the land of dreams here. Um. So yeah. So I mean. So we came to the show, and um. I think. Wow. So that showroom has been there for almost the whole time Wynn's been open, I think, maybe over 10 years. Because Avenue Q opened that showroom. Avenue Q opened it. And then I think... Uh, and they had some headliners in after that. Some Garth Brooks was in there for a little while. And also Spamalot. Spamalot. Oh, that's right. We had Monty Python, Spamalot. Spam Spam and I think Beyonce was in there one time. Oh, too. you're right. You're right. Right. I vaguely remember having to audition in what was Trist then. Now it's the other club, the new club. But we went in Trist, and we had to audition to try to get front row tickets to the Beyonce concert. That's hilarious. So me, a couple of my friends, we did all the single ladies. <laughs> it's a very bad moment. I, I knew, I, again, yeah. wow. Uh, you can't say anything without Did you get the tickets? Scott. No, we did not. We oh. were the, probably the worst act. That, <laughs> in fact, my friend who was the PR person for Wynn uh -huh. saw us when she, looked, when she looked up when we were coming out, and she's like shaking her head. like Because I think we were wearing heels. I wasn't wearing a leotard, but we were in heels trying to do the dance. I don't dance. Well, don't ask me. I don't dance. Um, but Showstoppers. So Showstoppers has been there about two years now. Yes. Right. Mm. And you you actually have been in the show since its inception. Since the very beginning. Yeah. We uh, we started rehearsal at the beginning of October yeah. 2014. Okay. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. And did you have to audition for Mr. Wynn? How, I, did, the, how did the audition process actually, come for you? Did you have to audition? Of the six principal singers, I'm the only one that didn't. Isn't that crazy? Um, Let me just make sure the camera has this because he doesn't need to audition, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, he, he he just no. Gets hired on the spot. I I was a um I I think uh, there was originally supposed to be two guys and two girls. Okay, and then um they found a uh, Lindsay who does uh -huh. the Chicago numbers, right, right. and so they were looking for a guy to kind of match it. And gotcha. so they kind of went back on an audition search. I was actually doing the show Into the Woods, um, oh. actually up in Vermont. Oh my goodness. And we hadn't even opened yet. Okay. We were in rehearsal and I get a call from uh, various people that had kind of thrown my name in the thing. Yeah, and they said, yeah. would you just send a video in? And if you've ever been a performer, a video audition rarely works yeah. because they want you in the room. And of course, I would assume Mr. Wayne wants to see you right. in front of him. Correct. And so Oh, I did it, um, you know, hidden from the theater company because we hadn't even opened yet. Yeah, and yeah. we had like a two month run ahead of us. Sure. So I did it, didn't think of twice about it. And then um, like the night, the last night of tech, which means we're about to open yeah. like in two days, uh, I get a call saying, you know, the very like a, almost midnight on the East Coast sure. saying, would you like to come do it? And I said, of course. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. but how do I get out of that? <laughs> but uh, it all ended up working out great. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine came and filled in for me. But uh, yeah, it's just. It so you came back to Vegas because Andrew, as you know, 
Andrew is very famous for his role as Raul in the amazing spectacular Venetian. Yes, the Phantom of the Opera. Oh my, so we still see shows in that showroom. I mean, we I think we saw Carly Rae Jepsen. We've seen who was the Italian lady we saw there? Carlo. Uh, who's the famous Italian actress? Sophia Loren. We saw her Sophia there. Loren. Random. Oh, wow. Very random show. Um, but the showroom to me still is the Phantom showroom. I don't care if they call it the yeah. Venetian Theater or whatever they want to call it. When you walk in there, it is just paying homage to the. Phantom they still have the, the chandelier. Opera. The chandelier, and you have a name for the chandelier, right? A Maria. Maria. Yeah, after the uh, still, after the scenic designer. Yeah, it still looks like that theater. I love that show. I mean, that show was such a beautiful moment for me. You know, because it just. It was done so beautifully, yeah. you know, an $80 million show. Yeah. I, I, if you have crazy. money to spend, this is what... So you came here for Phantom. I did, yeah. So tell us how you got here and where you came from. Um, I was came from New York. Yeah. Um, I had uh, I had been doing a concert in, in uh, Canada okay. and had lost totally lost my voice the week before this audition. And strangely enough, my agent had pulled me out of that that call yeah because he said oh you know agents get only a certain amount of spots it's not just that they want to see you a certain agency sure. might get like five spots right so he had pulled me out of it but i was like i am so right for this part and i don't know why i felt it in my bones that i was like i need right. to be seen so i kept hunt you know haunting them and just being like listen i'll be fine you yeah. know i just need a you know week to kind of get over this and finally i like pushed in they i they said okay we got you in on a wednesday morning and i went in there like at 8 a.m., mm -hmm. they were able to squeeze me the first person in. I come out of the, I sang and I did a couple of scenes and I come out of the audition and one of the guys there was like, oh, were you here? Was it the same people as yesterday? And I'm like, wait a minute, it's my first audition. Yeah. Well, I ended up, my agent got me to the callbacks. <laughs> oh. So about a 20 minute audition, about two hours later, I, I landed the job. So it was have, just. He it, has good luck with auditions. I did. You know what? Strangely enough. Some people don't test well. This I is know. who you want to be in a room with. We've talked about this more. Like when you do like regional theater, if you're yeah. like an actor, regional theaters are like the theaters in your community that yeah. do like, you know, like a month. Summer theater or something yeah, like that. Something yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you go in New York for those, and you'll you'll go in for like six callbacks for a, a run. For and we always laugh because we're always thinking, you know, if you make a mistake, yeah. I mean, I'm only there for like, Three weeks to a couple months, you right, know. Right, right. I mean, it's not like, but then you'll go in for these big auditions, and it's something about like, like these creative an staff. Eighty million dollars. I know. They're, they're like, like check. Mark. I feel like they know, like yeah. they know how to pick. You know, they know how to, what they're doing. I think it's like a confidence yeah, in what they're right. doing. So, and also it helped. Um, I had worked with Hal Prince, who's the director, oh, okay, the legendary yeah. director sure. of that. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, been on the national tour of Evita as one okay. of the leads. So um, I think when my name came up, he was the only person of like, there was probably about 15 people there. Yeah. And um, he was the only person that they said, well, you might have to come back in a couple of days now sure. to sing for him. And then uh, a couple hours later, I get a call and he said, he's, 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 I don't he's, need to hear he's, he's, he knows that I can do it. So, you know, I read somewhere for you that um, you, you have obviously, you had obviously seen Phantom of the Opera when you were younger. Yeah. And, you know, that was actually the first Broadway show I ever saw. Yeah. I saw in London. Oh, not London. I saw it in L.A. Okay. With Davis Gaines. Who's amazing. Who was amazing. Who I ended up seeing later on in Vegas perform in some random theater up in Summerlin. Huh. Um, but I was mesmerized. Now, I, I listened to all the music when I was younger. My cousin and I sang it when all of our... Um, uh, older cousins would go off on Saturday nights. She and I were kind of stuck at home. Yeah, we'd play, you know, with the blankets over our head, course, and we bought yeah. a little mask oh, and everything. Totally. And tried yeah. to do it. Um, but yeah, that was the first show we saw. We saw in L.A., and it was just, you know, it profoundly changed your life on you see your first Broadway show for sure. For and sure. for you, I want to understand because you're saying like when you see the show, you can see yourself in that role. You say one day I'm going to play something in this role. Did you think it was Raúl? Did you think it was the Phantom? I um how did you see yourself in that? I think it was because when I saw the show I was a lot younger. Yeah. I um my I remember my aunt had the the CDs of yeah. it and she yep. she took us through the she, we, we were on like a road trip and she she told us every she had seen it in yeah. Los Angeles yeah. and she went through every little bit and I was like wow I got to see this show. Well it opened I'm from Northern California. Yeah. So it was open up open in San Francisco okay. and with Davis Gaines. Yeah. And um, funny. I went and saw it, and then my voice teacher was Pianji, the the, oh, okay. wow. the heavy yeah. guy. So I ended up, I took like a class from him, and then I said, hey, I would love to take voice from you. Yeah. So he he took me on as like, he auditioned me basically, because he's like, I want to take on a bunch of, you know, basic singers, right. you know. So he auditioned me. mom and, wants to get into Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Everyone says their kid's the best, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took from him, and then when I was in the show, um, I, I remember telling you know so many people that it's like when i was a kid i knew like i would watch that show and i'd yeah. be like i think i wanted to be raw because i think i identified younger yeah. than than the phantom but then 
having done the show, I've loved singing Music of the Night. I do it oh, lots yeah. in concerts. So, yeah. so I think it's one of those ones where it's like, now if I could play it again, I would love to play the Phantom. Right. You know. Right. I mean, he gets that emotional journey. You know, he's only on stage for like I know. twenty-one and minutes. The funny thing about it, he's yeah, he's barely on the stage. Yeah. Raul is actually my favorite character in the show Aww. because my cousin and I used to sing "All I Ask" all yeah, the time. It exactly. was like it was the best song. <laughs> oh, you have to have a moment about that. When I got when I got offered the show, they said, yeah. just don't screw up. I'll ask of you because everyone knows it, yeah. so yeah. you can't you can't screw it up because everyone knows that damn song, you know. And it it's is the one song, and it is. And I did screw it yeah. up when oh. when my my oh, first how'd that go. Well, oh, <laughs> I, you know, I uh, I did screw it up one night. I was in the show, and I was million dollars remember and i could feel it like the lyrics are going and i was like let me be inside you and oh, i literally oh. say and i said inside you and i'm like and and the and christy our christine was like her eyes like opened up like giant saucers and i i'm not kidding you i i heard the front few rows kind of right. audibly like did he really say that <laughs> you just tell him that's the vegas version that's, that's right we got to keep it a little we racy change it here up, little vegas. darlings we change it up for yeah. you here no so i made oh my, my i made my mark in yeah. that legendary show and they will always remember that show like, <laughs> i don't think that was a lyric honey no but, yeah yeah wow that, that was... i've always wondered if people feel like when they muck up the lyrics like that where um you know like obviously the reaction of your co-star like what did he just say yeah because usually you want to play off of what someone is doing and of course when you're performing a song and a show every night yeah and keeping it fresh like that yeah he just threw it out there just be like inside you <laughs> and she wow. was just the funny part was it took her like about 20 seconds to like recover because yeah. she i think she also got th- a little thrown i mean she's of course laughing inside you know yeah and um and i'm like s- sitting there going don't throw me under the bus yeah, don't throw please. me under the bus <laughs> she can think of a lyric she can come back with like oh sure yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> so i have to tell you andrew and i first met i think you started coming to uh, to dw bistro yes love so me we DW. had the whole phantom cast most of the time yeah. and, and the jersey, jersey boys, boys cast. Yeah. they would reserve a table of like fifty thousand people no. yeah back we on a sunday when we had one restaurant oh my we god we just had the the one side of our restaurant we didn't even Get, add it i know Get, getting into your restaurant on a oh sunday morning oh jesus you know when we first open honestly yeah see scott over here he tells everyone i don't go on sundays so I, I know i know i'm like why does everybody always feel that way because <laughs> we've been there <laughs> we well, know how hard it is to get in on that you know, day. i i made i made my partner here jason i made him uh do the mimosas yesterday because dalton was out uh-huh. uh doing our pop-up and so Jason had, was behind the bar pouring the mimosas because yeah. we still do the, all the mimosas. Oh God, yeah, of course. He looked over at me and he was like overwhelmed. I said, "I know this is because it's crazy." I mean, that door is nonstop, nonstop. But when Andrew used to come there, it was literally like we had a tiny restaurant. We had maybe like you know maybe like twelve tables uh-huh. besides the patio, teeny tiny. And he would come Sunday morning, and I swear everyone was hungover from the show. <laughs> yeah, and they're rolling in. They're like, it's us. It's us. It's our day off yeah. on Sunday. Phantom and in Showstoppers. Are it was great, Sunday. and we got very acquainted. And I really, really, really loved that the show community wrapped around DW because, as I was talking prior to the show starting, um, Andy Wright in our office, he is starting a whole series. Well, he's been starting a whole series for us called the Set List, which we've oh, done good. for the last year and a half. So we recreate great albums from start to finish. That's amazing. So when we walked in here, uh, Scott was playing Amy Winehouse because we did an Amy Winehouse show at Brooklyn Bowl a few months back. Uh, oh, I heard about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, we've done we've done um, Alanis Morissette. We've done Van Halen. We've done Bon Jovi. We've done Thriller. So we're doing Rocky Horror Picture Show in October. Uh, so if he's still here, I know. We're going to talk about Showstoppers because it's closing September 30th. 30th. Oh, so you might be here. Maybe yeah, maybe. He doesn't go yep. to New York yet. Yep. We, if we can get uh, Rocky Horror done early enough, we can get you in the show in October. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, so showstoppers. Yeah, tell us how the, I mean, obviously the process of of being in the show. So the show the show itself is not um, not uh, another show that's on Broadway. It's an original production of of songs that uh, have been compilated to make showstoppers. Yeah, it's songs that were like big hits um, and were were numbers that could be recreated on their own. Right. And sometimes they have a little bit of different spin than the show does, or yeah. sometimes they're kind of closely resembling the thing, but they're just songs that really like audiences have loved yeah. that are timeless kind of songs, you yeah. know? Um, and, and they have picked some interesting numbers. I mean, I, 
Excuse me, you have we we sang along to Annie Get Your Gun, you know, anything you can do. Yeah. You can do better. It's that's one of the most fun songs. I know. It's funny because we get to do giant, you know, show stopping numbers. Yeah. And then you can do a small number like that, but the lyrics are so funny. And, oh, and the two and, of them. Oh my god, play Randall off. and Rachel. Randall uh, Keith, right? Randall Keith, yeah. He is hysterical. Isn't he funny? Oh my god. I think I think Andy wanted to get him in one of our shows. I think I think I've seen him. He might have done some uh Regional theater with the Super He was Summer in Spam a lot with me. Oh, he was. I mean, in, oh. I mean, um, Phantom with he me. He was. He was in Phantom with me. Yes. He was one of the swings. Yes, he, and... he was. He was because I'd seen Phantom there probably about ten times at yeah. the Venetian. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm a, I'm addicted to Phantom. That was yeah. kind of. We got a nice. I think we were there like the last few days of the show. Uh-huh. So they took us on a, a backstage tour. We got my I got my picture taken up on stage. Yeah. The empty back. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful theater. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you obviously numbers so, like we're looking up here. We see uh, yeah. Cell Block Tango from Chicago. Yeah, you have uh, a multiple numbers from Cabaret. Yep, um, and you the were money you song. loved it. Oh yes, I love well, it. Well, we saw Cabaret just the other night. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, when yeah, they came towards, to Smith Center. Center. Yeah, yeah, and I'd never really seen the updated version, even with um, uh, you know who came in. They had Neil Patrick Harris as the MC. They've had yeah. uh, Alan Cumming, oh. which I think he's coming here. Oh, yes. He's going to be here at the Smith Center. Oh. In July. Oh, no. That was July. We're in August now. Yep. He came already. We missed him. He came already. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This is obviously from Cabaret as well. Yes. Um, and then you do some numbers from Fosse and Chicago. Greece and, now. And so Greece. So Greece, talk about Greece, because Greece is a new number you put in the show. Yep. So obviously you play Danny. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, I'm done. Oh, don't tell me your name because I know her. Nicole. Uh, Nicole Kaplan. Nicole ha- was so much fun. Isn't she great? Oh, my gosh. What was your favorite number, Jay? Nicole did. She did. Um, she was like, she's tripping over everybody. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, my I gosh. Know. I'm blanking right See? now. But um, but she's hilarious. Trip. Yeah. yeah she, and she played that very well. She's she's she amazing. So like she can be watch. funny. She has a great voice. She's yeah. just beautiful, of course, as you see. And then who was the other lead who belted out both every Barbara Streisand and Judy Garland number that, in the that's, show? That's uh, Rachel Tyler. Wow. Yeah. And Goosebumps when she yeah. came out and sang. I, I mean, know. people she's were amazing. just. And, and you know, the audience. So this is one of the questions that we have come up a lot. So you know, we've talked to a number of guests here. You know, there's obviously a place for the major big shows like the Cirque shows mm-hmm. and, and Blue Man Group and, and large scale shows. But we talk about you know Matt Goss. We talk yeah. about um, Frankie Moreno. We talk about people who put on smaller shows that have a more intimate group of people where they're doing more of the old standards, the old numbers. Yeah. Because you do look at the demographic of the audience. I know the demographic of the win is a little bit older sometimes. Yeah. But you know they really identify with the music. Yeah, I think I think the the true test is if it's even if it's old an older song per se when mm-hmm. it was written, it's how you tell it, and it can be yeah. timeless. And a lot of the ones in the show work because they are timeless yeah. songs. And if they're done really well, you yeah. don't want to see them done mediocre. Then right. it feels dated and feels like tired. You know, there's a, that kind of thing. But there's there's a way that they are able to do them in such a, a way that if you have really great talented people, and I think that's what Steve Wynn is yeah. great about. He he hired like the best talent, 30 dancers. Yeah. I mean, that's They're crazy. They're amazing. And, you know, we had we had Tina Walsh on here. Not oh, yeah. Too, yeah. She Tina, came on right point. the week of Jubilee's closing because there were a lot of people oh, in town for yeah. the closing. So yep. she came. She was a alumni cast. And she was talking about, well, you know, she was in Phantom and she was yeah. in the she was in the Phantom tour right now or she, I think. The she, world tour. Yeah, the yeah, world yeah, tour she, of it. Um, but we were talking about all the costuming and whatnot. And so, yeah, we had mentioned the costuming in the show is is amazing. Uh, unbelievable. The thing about shows, they oh. just spared no expense. I mean, those all those showgirl costumes in Razzle Dazzle, each yeah. one of those is 50000 Oh, my I gosh. Mean, Did I mean, you hear that? Yeah. $50,000. Each one, yeah. Oh it was gosh. crazy. And they're just beautiful. Um, <sighs> you know, the thing about it is, like, Steve wanted it. What I really respected, he, like what you were saying, is, like, creating like a big show with yeah. an intimate feel. Yeah. That's why we kind of address the audience. We don't ignore you. Yeah. You're not, yeah, you're like, not a fourth, you're not wall, a fourth and, wall in yeah. it. And, and it is to bring you in a part of it. And I think that was a cool challenge for all of us six principals. Yeah. We've done a lot of Broadway shows. Right. So it, a lot of times you do cut off that audience as, I mean, you cut them off in the sense that they're not acknowledged, right. you know, as part of playing your, your number. Yeah. But, it was fun to kind of rediscover that kind of feeling. I do it with concert work, you know, I yeah. tra- travel the world with concerts and stuff, but I do that. But it was fun to kind of do this. Well, you get that immediate reaction because I think even when, you know, she comes out to do Don't Rain on My Parade or a number where you're belting, she really accepts the audience and, you you know, people can standing ovations at random yeah. times in the show. It's not like it has to be, oh, I'll wait to stand up at the end because you're reacting right away 
to the person on stage rather than it being like, okay, we're going to move on to the next number because it's really tied to that personal performance. That's what I like about the show. It's really different. Yeah. Phantom had like a, a feel like as it went on, it was like you knew where the applause was right. and, and there was like, you know, it's a different show, dramatic, and it had like a different feel. Yeah. This one, each night, it's like resonates differently with different groups. Like right. we ha- we've had a lot of dancers in town since there's like, this is like the dance competition, nas- uh-huh. like yeah. national time in <laughs> Vegas, I guess. <laughs> and because the show is so dance heavy, there's yeah. so many, there's 30 dancers um, and you know, it has such a dance feel to that yeah. thing. You And then you have these amazing singers. We, it's funny, like different moments resonate with these, you know, with the audience. Some, oh, yeah. Or you get an older audience that says, oh my God, that song, I, I remember that right. back then. And it's, you know, and it just kind of gives someone a memory of something that they loved. Well, especially know? if they saw that particular show. Yeah. And I know, you know, um, particularly when somebody does try to take on a, a number, like a Barbra Streisand number, mm-hmm. you know, you're like not even comparing the voice to that. You're just yeah. letting that stand alone. Yeah. But let's not forget that there's probably 30 plus orchestra members on stage with you. Yeah. That's even more like a removed from the pit kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had Keith Thompson on here a couple of weeks ago talking about Idaho that he wrote. Yeah. With I loved write. it. I saw yeah. It. And he talked about the same thing, having the orchestra on stage. It became part of the show. The orchestra itself come becomes part of what's happening. They're absolutely part of the show. You know, we, you know, you feel their energy. It's a different sound when yeah. you're like when you're as a it. singer, as when you're on stage and they're kind of coming from you. It's not just piped in from right. the pit. I've, you know, and also getting to know them because yeah. sometimes like in Phantom, they would have their oh, own yeah. dressing space and then they'd have to go over there and you would never see you them. Never so, see them. Uh, you know, occasionally and, and now uh, it's a lot of the same orchestra from yeah. our show. And now you, you we, That's fun. we we really know them really well. Yeah. And they really do feel the thing about it is, is like we're also passionate about, you know, the thing about artists that I love yeah. is why I stay in the business, too, mm-hmm. is. You know, everyone has their passion behind it. And it's yeah. like mine's music and acting and someone else's could be dancing and someone else could be playing music. But the feeling of like the thing I love about this show is you feel it on stage with yeah. each of us. And I think we all get a chance to shine. Everyone's connected. You know, and they get a and, and definitely the orchestra shines. I mean, yeah. you you felt it, you know. You, you said some of the orchestra were in Phantom Orchestra. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they remember you from the show. Oh, of course. Yeah. They're like, there's Raul. Uh, I know. Did you have a- did you have a particular orchestra people who were coming after you? Like, I I I loved you so much. No, they're no. they're they're not, they're jaded. No, oh just, no, 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 they're not jaded. They've done it all. I mean, some of them they're with Celine sometimes okay. too, yeah, and so yeah. so they. Th- what it is is more like they're they love this show because it does promote what like excellent level. Yeah, you know, showmanship. Yeah, you know, yeah. all around, and so I think that was what. I like about them. They're just always so, you know, we rehearse together. Yeah. You know, it's not like they're gone and they never, they're always a part of everything. So we're always celebrating them because yeah. they're unbelievable. I mean, yeah. you should hear them when we, we switch numbers that we've switched okay. them every few mo- months or so. Yeah. And them to p- pick up something brand new and you hear like 30 piece play. Mm. I mean, they're such, this is like the top of the town. I mean, these, these, these yeah. musicians are like the top musicians that here we have in Vegas. I heard them, we went to, um, uh, the Sinatra hundredth anniversary. Yeah, at the yeah. at the Most Wind of them Theater there. there, and a lot of them were performing because they set up kind of similar um, staging from Showstoppers yeah. to uh, put on the show. Yeah, very talented. Um, when you were talking about that, we were talking about the um, musicians as well. A lot of them. Um, uh, where was I going with that? I had somewhere. I was going. I was going somewhere uh, with them. I don't know. Um, they do. Oh, that's this. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, angels from above. Jesus. I know. They get to start, they get to play a lot of um, opening songs and closing songs, you know, finale songs yeah. from shows. You have one from a chorus line as right. a finale, but then you have, you know, Chicago's main number that obviously yeah. BB Newerth and a lot of other people made famous doing. That must be so gratifying on that sense because you have, you have, you have the opening and, and closing numbers. They become like this whole, like, um, I mean, people come in because that's what they remember. They, you know, I get goosebumps thinking about Chicago only because I got to see it with BB Newerth. Yeah. And when that song starts, you know, come on, baby. I mean, they, it, it's, it's, you just get taken back to when, oh, I remember when I saw that with so and so. And I think that's what's always worked about our show yeah. is that it kind of brings you that memory. And, and, and I think that's what we celebrate on yeah. that. And then that's true. And then yeah. there's a lot of kids that come in, like I said, that come in, they, they've never, maybe they've only heard it on the soundtrack. Right. And, um, and then I think it's exciting for them to get to, we get to meet them afterwards. A lot of times yeah. we'll go out and, and, you know, I think it's inspiring to show people like something done at such a great level. Right. Um, and then hopefully inspire 
kids to go out and you know yeah and fulfill be it per- and be performers. You well, know? you you fulfill that sort of um, selfish desire that people have, like in their head. And I'm sure this was in Steve Wynn's head because I know when they do like Bellagio Fountain Show, I remember yeah. they do one. You oh know, yeah, from yeah, Chorus yeah, Line yeah, yeah. and the Fountain Show. And when you see. All the 30 plus dancers and you guys all coming out doing leg kicks yeah. and hats. I mean, that routine. See, I get goosebumps. That routine yeah. is so amazing that people can stage that every night. I think that's why it's timeless. It's again, so it's awesome. again, that's what works about it is that it's like it's it truly is even outside of the show. Yeah. We do so well that it really still makes you feel that if it didn't, you would feel like it's like a cruise ship show right. or right. So, right. something right. like right. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think. We, you know, Bjork was brought in, uh, Bjork Lee, who was yep. the, um, who was uh, his assistant, her assistant. And, um, and so she came in, she reset this, that number on wow. the show. And so she talked about the history of it and every little bit in, in detail on it. So yeah. you have that history and you see that history on stage and you may not know it as an audience member, but it resonates. Yeah, in because it comes off together yeah. in the way that it is. So with September 30th looming for you, yeah. what does that mean for Andrew and where will Andrew go? Well, um, it, I'm going to be going back to New York, okay. you know, because this uh, Broadway is kind of what I do. So, yeah. you know, so I, I, I miss Las Vegas. I've loved it. I, you know, when I left in Phantom, I thought, I think I'm ready to go back to New York. I had been here yeah. almost five years yeah. um, and I loved it, but I was thinking, okay, maybe it's time to do something new. And I, and I got there and I, I missed it after I gave, I gave it like six months and I was yeah. like, I really miss it, you know? And um, I'm not like a huge, I love New York and for the arts yes, um, and their appreciation for that, but I don't love the daily life of New York. Like I'm not like a New Yorker do yeah. or die but but i do you love, love vegas for, for what i do you've been like able to... it i i didn't think i would but yeah. i i so everybody lo- says i you know it's funny yeah. it's like you would when i first moved here the first six months i was like okay i'm not sure i fit in here <laughs> and then like i met a lot of the jersey boys and yeah. a lot of my cast and you get closer as you get going um yeah and so you kind of have a community of people and like you said um you know keith thompson mm-hmm. has his has that seeing this those composer showcase, composer showcase and, and those things i think composer showcase was the first time i really realized oh there's a whole Community there's a good community here, going on. You know, that does yeah. kind of what I do. And there's all these artists out here that love to do this too. And so that's kind of when I, I was like, oh, and, I, and then I explore, you know, then you give Vegas a chance and you understand what it is. And I, I love living here. So I mean, just to never yeah. say I wouldn't return. Would you consider like your own kind of um, the best of like show? Because, yeah. you know, you can play Cabaret Jazz at Smith Center or some place where you put on an Andrew Ragone show yeah. of things that you've, songs that you've done in the shows that you've been in. Yeah. Um, Vita, that, you have a nice yeah. laundry list of shows yeah. that people have followed. Absolutely. I mean, you can think about how many guests for the years you were at Family Opera have seen you. Right. And want to follow what you're doing and be able to come see, you know, like a, you know, f- you know, 90 minute show of you or. Yeah. 70 minutes at the Smith Center. I'm just saying that. No, I'm just throwing it no, out there, Myron I, Martin. Strangely enough, show, it is him. kind of in the yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. There is something okay. in the works. So. See, I knew I'd wiggle it out of uh, I didn't want to throw it out it's there. All right, it's yeah. all right. Um, so I, I, one thing for Showstoppers is concerned. So we have Showstoppers run through September 30th. Yes. It plays six nights a week. It's My, dark on Sundays. Dark on Sundays. Dark on Sundays. Yeah. 7.30 during the week, 8 o'clock on Friday. Fridays. I remembered. Yeah. I'm very good. I remembered. We have a couple minutes left. Um, Can we wrangle you to do a set list show with us or um, some type of Broadway uh, um, side by side? I know Andy Wright's going to be okay. Good. Andy's probably watching on a boat. In uh, New York right now. That's right. He's on vacation. I texted him. I said, do you have any more of Andrew's pictures? He's like, I'm on a boat. (laughs) I said, does he know? where? I I don't know. He said, when I get service out here in the middle of the Atlantic, I'll let you know. So thank you for coming on the show. Oh, my God. We're going to come see you a few more times before the show's over, if that's okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, cheers. Cheers. He's got his mule. I've got mine. Yep. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye. 